Hello everyone, this is Crota giving you game four in a best of seven series between Root versus EG. This is all taking part of the Machinima Realm Invitational. What you'll quickly notice is this is a 2v2 matchup. So we have Root Ruby and I uh, yeah, Root Cats versus EG Axlav and finally EG Strife Crow. Now Oh, you guys may be wondering why this is a 2v2 matchup instead of a 1v1. If you guys are following closely, you would know that Game 4 should be taking place on in the Delta Quadrant. Well, rather than deny you guys any 2v2 goodness um, in the finals just in case EG or uh, just in case EG was able to take Game 4, and I decided that it would be okay if they did play a 2v2 on Monolith Ridge or Monolith Ridge first. So this is going to be an interesting game. Um, EG was very, very strong in the 2v2 matchups. And now we see a pylon already being placed down over here. And now Axab moving out with a very, very early probe. And now um, Rootcats being very smart lists and figuring out what in control did in the earlier matchups and using this one overlord to scout for any proxy gateways. In comes this one probe now. So the probe will walk up this ramp, quickly see that there's not anything in play here. Now, as I said earlier, EG was, I believe, seven and uh, seven and one in the 2v2 matchups. And another interesting point up to now is that EG Axlab is currently 9-0 in the Machinimo Realm Invitational. He hasn't lost one game yet, even his 2v2 matchups and his, um, I believe, game two on or in the Zonaga Cavern. So I am very, very much looking forward to seeing if EG Axlab can keep his streak alive and go 10-0. That would probably make him the all-star from this tournament. I, I would not imagine any player being able to go 10-0, especially against the lineups that we have here. Currently, this probe wandering around back and forth so far. Taking a look at Cats. Cats opening up with a spawning pool and an extractor. Should be getting that metabolic boost in just a moment. Meanwhile, Drew be opening up with a refinery. And he got that refinery before he laid down that barrack. So he should be going for what I believe to be a reactor factory. Getting into very, very early Hellions. So it's going to be Zergling Hell Hellion most likely coming in from the Zerg and Terran player. The Protoss and Zerg player. Um, most likely going to be moving out. There is one uh, just dancing pro back over here. One spine crawler currently being built, and now a pylon being built over here. So Axlab warping in a pylon. That is a very very curious position. Um, Strike Crow does see this pylon, but I'm not exactly sure why he isn't doing anything about it just quite yet. That is a very dangerous place for a pylon to be. Cannons could be. No, sorry, Axlab. Um, that's his partner. Um, I was overreacting to absolutely nothing. So Zergling's now wandering around in here as well. Yeah, that one pylon will allow Axlav to warp in units into his uh, into his friendly place there. We do see, um, I, wow, I can't see past this. Um, is this a complete front door seal? I believe it is a complete front door seal. Not allowing any units to walk in or out of here. So yeah, this is a complete seal. Units are stuck. And now we have a stalker on that backside. So most likely he will be getting stalker blink. One Overlord from Strife Crow has made it all the way across the map. Druby currently being revealed. There is a barracks over here towards the front. Double training Hellions now, as I mentioned earlier, and now getting more barracks as well. This is all operating off of one gas play so far. So deciding to go into one gas play, and now a lot of Hellions will be trained. If I did not mention this earlier, EG is currently having a 3-0-0 lead. So Root definitely needs to win this game. Root Cat and Root Ruby do work and do play a lot of 2v2s together. But EG Axlav, as I mentioned earlier, is also very, very strong at this stage in the game. At this stage in the tournament, not losing one matchup so far. Hellions now making their way straight inside the base in order to get some damage. There are two spine crawlers here. And wow, very nicely done. Two spine crawlers, and we will be able to warp in units as well. I don't see any units warping in. Zergen's now trying to engage back as well. A lot of damage being dealt as that one spine crawler does have a base of two armor, absorbing a lot of that damage from those Zerglings. Now, back over here, more Hellions going to try to perhaps test the waters. But um, this particular build by Axab is very, very strong. Zerglings have a very difficult time trying to take down these front door buildings as they have a lot of hit points. And now Axab complaining about lag, so perhaps there are observers that will be able to pull back. 
um, we'll pull out of this game back over here. Zerglings and Hellions now trying to test the waters. We may be getting into Banshees at some point. No, no second gas yet. So Druby really has no real way of dealing any serious damage. Zerglings now trying to make their way out. A lot of Banelings though, and the Banelings are going to be a decent counter for those Hellions as long as those ba um, as long as those Banelings get that movement speed upgrade. Are we attacking the tier two? No, not quite yet. Stalkers now testing the waters once again. And this very, very large army of Druby and Cats unable to deal any real damage. And this is going to be a problem as Axlav and now M. Stryfko are able to tech into the later stages. So we have saw that a lot of the games by EG were, or, I'm sorry, a lot of the games won by Root and Cats or a lot of the 2v2 matchups were generally dealt with rushing. But both players not opting to rush and now we finally see... Um, Axlab trying to take down his own uh, warp gate here as it is currently blocking his way in and out of his base. The early aggression um, pretty much has been neutralized already. There are a lot of there are there is some sentries that are currently being warped in and now more stalkers and banelings as well. Those banelings should be able to get off a lot of damage very very easily across some of those zerglings and those zerglings are deciding to move away as cats does have one overlord in position he doesn't see anything that's really happening there zergling battling back and forth and it looks like strife crows one zergling with that natural regeneration getting one more hit in and able to survive i don't know how that quite works out but now Zerg uh, hellions making their way to try to take down this one Zergling here on the high ground. More Zerglings once again trying to move out and Zerglings engaging back and forth army wise. Both sides have decent sized armies as both sides are also checking into um, tier 2 and getting second bases. So second bases coming online for Druby and Cats as well. A lot happening in the center of the field. Stalkers now trying to engage with those Banelings as support. I don't see any tech to tier 2 coming in from um, any of the Zerg players though. So only factory and robotics facility. Um, has been placed down obviously by the Terran and Protoss players, but no tech to tier 2 coming in from any of the Zerg players. Banelings, Zerglings, and Sentries now holding off this position here. Both sides having very, very strong armies. And now you can also see Axe or Druby getting a 2,000 mineral army. A cat's getting on 1500 against 1750 and 900, but with the sheer number of sentries able to corral and block many of those hellions, those hellions aren't able to deal that much damage. We should now be seeing another nexus being placed down by Axlav in just a moment. Perhaps he's just waiting for 400 minerals and will be warping in a nexus there as this game is continuing. Axlav, no, just going to do some long distance mining, taking a look at the harvester count, 30, 20 versus 33 and 22. So the Zerg player is both very, very light on harvesters. They could start power droning in just a second. And Katz is now going for an additional hatchery inside his own base that will allow him to get more larva, perhaps train up another queen as well in order to increase that larva production and get a really strong army of Zerglings. So just mass Zergling coming out. I don't see an evolution chamber though. So without an evolution chamber obviously no weapons upgrades for those zerglings and those zerglings are going to have a very difficult time especially against the banelings of strife crow as one baneling is able to detonate and take down multiple zerglings even with weapons upgrade but and um, strife crow does have a larger number of banelings and those banelings definitely counter the zerglings if those zerglings are in swarm if one baneling takes down three zerglings which it is normally very very easy to do for one baneling and that would be a, a significant trade zerglings once again just wandering around back and forth both players just pretty much sitting inside um sitting in, in within the respective sides of the map no one really engaging just quite yet there is an observer now on the move and i believe axav should be able to see yes he sees the medevac now coming in is he going to be able to intercept those units in time it does not look like it as those hellions are going to be dropping out of the sky looking to deal some damage and now in come red flame hellions not the blue flame variety won't be able to get as many probe kills trying to get some but stalkers are already coming in to intercept and it looks like the medevac may just leave those hellions behind leaving able to pick up one of them and the rest of the stalkers are now in retreat leaving and what three stalkers back here just in case that one hellion tries to revisit the party Observers are now being paced, placed down by Axlav, so Axlav wanting to get good control and good sight of the map will know when Zerglings are moving out. Army wise, what, 2900, 1915, 1825, and Stryko sitting at 800, but Stryko probably has a large number of drones now. Yeah, he has been power droning, so he is going to get a very, very strong economy going in just a few um, moments. Taking a look at the harvester count, yeah, 1500 versus 9 or 1000, 1200, and 1180. So about even so far, the Terran player benefiting from those mules. 
as we are getting the level one weapons upgrade and also Colossus. So Colossus will be trained up. You can see a large number of Zerglings. Also, Banelings joining in on that army as well. Marauders joining in on this fight. And now Druby sitting on a very large army, but he doesn't have really any true opportunity to attack. There's so many sentries out there with full energy and full energy sentries is just an absolute nightmare for any tier one units as they get split apart, cut in half, and then reduced down to nothing. Katz doesn't have the movement speed upgrade on his um, on his banelings yet it is not being researched but we do see an overseer now being teched somewhere um, as those zergings are now trying to take down these rocks as well both players just sitting inside their base perhaps waiting for someone else to make the wrong move and root doesn't want to try to engage right now because if root engages um, they're, they're gonna have a very very difficult uh, and makes a mistake then they will be down for nothing so i guess they're trying to just bait to see if they can force eg to move out and attack Axav currently um, about completing with that level 1 weapons upgrade, also getting the extended thermal lance research as well. Hellions now on the move. There are medevacs in the air along with Vikings. Vikings need to counter those Colossus. There are a lot of stalkers on the ground though. Activating those Guardian Shields. Banelings now coming in. And oh, one Baneling sacrificing against another group of Banelings. And all those Banelings by cats were pretty much taken down. Vikings are now engaging against those Overlords against as, instead of any of those other units. And now Banelings moving in. And now we also see Force Fields, Marauders trying to fight back and forth and roaches engaging roaches against marauders but there are force fields that try to hamper the production there and more banelings along the backside by cats cats finally moving in with those banelings melting multiple roaches and both sides battling back and forth and it's and it looked as though axav was the victor in that fight there you got to remember that stripe code didn't have that large of an army to begin with so both sides now sitting at about a 4,000 mineral army, but a much stronger gas tech by Axav. Axav sitting on a 1725. He has a lot of stalkers. He has a lot of colossus or three colossi there. We now also see uh, what SCV is now being transferred over here to this low ground expansion, upgrading to a planetary fortress. Druby wants to run off of three bases. Zergings will be able to take down these rocks in just a second. And now Axav on the move with a very, very large number of forces. Overlords now getting picked off out of the sky as well. Down go a couple of those units and now income Baneling. Banelings are on a roll, but now stopped by force field. So a lot of force field stopping many of those Banelings before they get into splash damage. And now very, very nicely done by Axav. Axav with level one upgraded thermal lances extended range able to deal a lot of damage vikings now trying to come in roaches also coming in as well banings once again going to try to come in and melt many of those roaches but the roaches can take a lot of that damage and now more banings getting melted off over here marauders now trying to engage against those stalkers stalkers in full retreat the marauders now going after those colossus the colossus however immune to the concussive shells so they are not being slowed. The Zergans, however, able to walk in front and trying to get a lot of damage, picking apart many of Axlav's Colossi. And now all the Colossi are pretty much taken down. Roaches are re-engaging army-wise. Army 2,900 by Root Druby. So Druby has a larger army at this point and may be able to continue to press in and win this battle. Pylons are going to get taken down. A lot of units should be in production. Burrow now being researched as well. As those Marauders are going to try to walk up that ramp. Take down some of those Pylons. Taking down some of those Warp Gates as well. Need to make it up that ramp. Very, very low energy there. Roach is now coming in as well. Roach is going to get funneled and stuck. As those Medivacs need to heal up this very, very weak Marauder Marine Army. Now going straight into the army group here. Roaches are on the backside getting a lot of damage. And those Vikings are going to have a very, very bad day. Picking up those units and now trying to regroup. A lot of overlords here, so those Vikings could be having a field day with a lot of overlords. Those overlords just sitting in the air, waiting for the picking. Root Druby not not really doing much with them. I guess he's just waiting for Colossi to pop out, doing that little formation in the air, allowing those units to come out. We should be, perhaps see some stalkers warped in in just a second, but that Colossus will be popping out in just a moment. Roaches are over here. There are more Vikings being trained, and now Axla being very, very smart, deciding to cancel his Colossus realizing that any colossus that comes out of there would be instantaneously destroyed level two weapons upgrade and now another colossus being retrained up where is the other robotics bay robotics bay down over here as well stalkers perhaps should be warped in on that bottom side in just a second we are getting a lot of overlords in the air here yeah these vikings could have just decimated strife crows yeah and um, um, food and now he could be doing that but no not doing that at all 
The Vikings now perhaps going to try to engage. Yeah, going to get some quick quick and easy kills there. Uh, two of them are low on hit points. Two of them are now taken down as well. Zergings back over here now and perhaps want to take down this one overlord. This overlord is spewing creep and no no way to hit the anti-air until the Vikings make their way over. Vikings are going to be able to take down that overlord very, very easily. Medivax and Marauders on the move once again. Level 2 weapons upgrade. Level 1 melee attack. Level 1 ground carapace. And now Infestor is also being trained. Army-wise, both sides, very, very decent sized army. About 5,000 on both sides. As Cats also has a lot of Banelings. Banelings now moving out, trying to get some damage onto some of those Roaches. Roaches do move a little bit more quickly, though. And now trying to roll in. And now all those Banelings are just able to roll in and get a lot of damage. Not able to take down any of those Infestors. One Baneling just going to simply splash up against a lot of those units there. Vikings now trying to finish off a lot of those Overlords. Those Overlords are now getting taken down. Zerving's now coming in. Colossus getting a lot of damage. And now there are Infestors and Roaches just spewing all over the place. And EG, EG just doing a great job in this battle. Continuing to fight back and forth. Marauders fighting under the cover of that brush. Getting a lot of damage dealt across those Zealots there. The Zealots are upgraded 2-0. Marauders are only upgraded 1-0. Level 2 upgrades now coming online as well. Axe Lab with one observer in the air able to see. And now we have a very, very large ball of units from Axe Lab and also from Stripe Crow. Stripe Crow has the larger army at this stage in the game. More overlords being trained as Stripe Crow is supply locked. Vikings in the air perhaps trying to pick off some of those um, Colossus. Colossus now in full retreat. One Colossus is taken down, but more stalkers now coming in. And a fungal growth stopping Drubies. Vikings from being able to retreat. That was a very, very critical play there. As now Druby is in a little bit of trouble. There are a lot of medevacs in the air, but the Stalkers and the Colossi just simply able to walk and attack and dealing so much damage across the board. Roach is giving a lot of chase there as the medevacs now lift up perhaps to try to re-engage up onto that high ground. Marauders now in trouble as the Colossi are able to give sight to those units. And now the Marauders dropped straight into the laser fire of those Colossus. Level 3 weapons upgrade. Those Colossus dealing 42 damage per attack. Stalkers dealing 17. Level 3 upgrades against level 1. And I believe the gateway and the ground army of the Stalkers are just going to simply be able to walk over Drooby and Cats now. Very, very impressive play by Axelab. Also very great teamwork by Stripe Pro. Getting in some critical fungal growth. Are we going to get another fungal growth on top of those Metavacs? No, not going to get up any fungal growth there. But a lot of those SCVs now just getting wasted down over here trying to mine minerals it was within laser fire and taking so much damage Druby's base is now burning and in a bad bad way and it doesn't look like Druby will be able to come back into this perhaps all the all the resources will be transferred to cats there is this expansion down over here Druby does need to transfer some of his scvs over there is what one command center that was not upgraded to an orbital command so that is going to be an issue there is this expansion over here and it looks as those zerglings trying to make their way in banelings not going to run in perhaps detonate against some of those zealots there and now getting in that little swarm those banelings want to get damage onto those probes those probes are pretty much exposed three banelings and perhaps going to detonate able to take down many of those probes there so axe lab losing a little bit of his economy trying to and as we see what root trying to fight there and fight and claw their way back into this game stalkers able to easily take down many of those vikings of stalkers dealing 17 damage per attack um plus three upgrades just so powerful with those stalkers colossus on the move as well roaches are upgraded 1-0 and with a 7,000 mineral army compared to a 2500 eg is just doubling in terms of mineral count against um, root right now and root it is not looking good root may fall for nothing to eg here in the finals banelings now trying to make their way over once again but banelings are not going to be that strong and especially with a fungal growth on banelings force fields to reinforce the situation there so many banelings taken down more fungal growth across marauders and scvs just sitting there infester play working out so well as the zealots now try to come in trying to surround stalker blink has been researched giving chase against many of those marauders as well medevac now getting shot out of the sky as those zealots were trying continuing to give chase down go the rest of those marauders stalkers able to blink in once again almost able to take down that medevac and now root says gg so root falling to eg for nothing in the finals yeah um eg just playing some really really great games if you guys haven't seen games one through three they were all very very close matches and i can remember back to each of those games where it was one critical moment 
and the game could have swung either way. Game one on blistering sands, massive number of Thors not transitioning into Banshees when you saw the sheer number of roaches. And then game three, especially with Idra versus QXC, Idra getting very, very, very lucky with a group of Mutalists and able to snipe down a Thor and two dropships, one with Marines and Marauders, one with uh, a Thor, and that completely changed the pace of the game. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this 2v2 replay here between Root and EG here on Monolith Ridge. This is the finals. Um, EG taking first place with a very impressive victory over Root for nothing. Um, three games, 1v1, one, and one 2v2 game. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the Machinima Realm Invitational. If you guys um, really enjoyed it, let us know. Leave comments. Um, I wouldn't mind hosting this once again. I would structure it a little bit differently. Um, I talked to a lot of the clan leaders and I know how to make this tournament better, easier to follow, but it really needs some more fan support. Otherwise, I'm, I'm not sure if if it's really if it's really worth it or um, the time and the energy it takes to get all this together. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening and for my ramble at the end of this game here. And yeah, stay tuned. Stay tuned for more games. There, I will still be posting games up on Machinima Realm and my own YouTube channel, um, www.youtube.com/blizzshatter. And hope to see you guys on Battle.net.